Hey everybody, it's Will from Hold Fast Marine, your local boat shop, and guys, we're back. Well, kind of back. Um, this video is going to take me about three to four weeks to film. And why is it going to take three to four weeks to film? Well, because we're putting up a building. I have ordered a 36 foot long by 16 foot wide by 14 foot tall building from Shelter Logic. So why am I going to be building this building? Well, Holdfast Marine is going in a different direction. Now normally my day to day is working on boats like this, a few carburetor rebuilds, gel coat repairs, wiring, adding on of new things. And well, frankly, as much as I love my customers and I love working on boats, I have some ambitions and what we're going to be doing is we're going to start building the 23 foot Crowley Beal. For those of you who are not familiar with the Crowley Beal, it's pretty much a lobster boat design. It's comparable with the Sisu um, and a little bit wider than the Repco. If you haven't watched the Repco videos, go ahead and check them out. So the plan is to get this building erected and finished off slightly insulated. Um, I'm gonna be going over all the costs for this while keeping the videos short because I know you guys come here to watch me fart around with total boat products and boats, not build buildings. But I think this video could be really informative for those of you out there who maybe need a little building to do some work on your own projects. The next time we film, we're gonna have some site work done. For me, it's gonna be a week and for you guys it's going to be a nanosecond tomorrow's the day uh, we're going to be getting this done i've already come out and i've sprayed out my corners for the uh, building see here we've got that all marked out for the width and the length still haven't put the building together yet but working on it and then that's going to come from that line there that's going to go all the way down to there uh, over into the woods, back up uh, to right over in that area. It's going to be about 20 feet off the road, which is enough to, um, when you're backing up, because we have such a weird road here, you can see that this road is straight here going up the hill. But right here, there's a massive corner that kind of goes this way and then downhill. So we don't want any vehicles out in the road here. So that's something for you all to consider and maybe think about um, when you're doing your building. If it's going to be close to the road, make sure you back it off uh, quite a bit enough to be able to at least have your truck or vehicle off the road. And then the boat is going to be in your, uh, your Shelter Logic building. So... A little filming tomorrow. Let's get this going. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't do a lot of filming because I didn't want to uh, bother the workmen who were out here. Uh, we had some setbacks. Now, originally, if you remember, I sprayed out the area and showed you guys where it was going to go, nice and flat, nice and level, blah, blah, blah. Well, when they came out here and shot the grade, they found out that down at one end of the shed, it was going to be about a foot and a half to two feet lower than the grade at the other end of the road. So, thankfully, I had a giant pile of rocks down at the <laughs> on the other side of my property that we used to make this would you check that out ladies and gentlemen boys and girls everybody else look at this look at this wonderful stonework that we did here to bring this all around to get this grade up to level so instead of having a slightly unlevel uh, pad to do all of our work on we have a perfectly level pad from just on the other side of that machine back to about this stake right there. I am incredibly impressed uh, with the work that this comes. Oh, it's my Jesus shot. Anyway, I am super impressed at the work these folks did. Um, I, I believe it's Despre or Despre. Oh, man, well worth every cent. One of the other things that I kind of had as a last minute thought was a pathway to get into the building. And these folks went ahead and cut up this roadway here and then added the milled grindings into 
um, this area. And then they went ahead and they compacted it down. So you can see we have a nice compacted surface going all the way up that I can keep clear of the snow. Um, so I don't have to worry about slipping or falling or anything like that. And I have a place to bring materials in and eventually when we start hanging engines, a crane. They also took the milled grindings and graded this whole area out for me so that it pitches away from the front of the building, um, which is amazing because that's what we want. We don't want any water flowing into this building. So they brought the edge up all the way, flared out this way, and then again, flaring out up towards the driveway there. We have a very nice transition here between the milled grindings and the stone. They compacted the bejesus out of this with a very, very, very heavy plate compactor, not your typical one you'd rent at a home center, but something a lot larger uh, and, well, much heavier. So now, ladies and gentlemen, here comes the real work. We have to go ahead and put up the building. That's what's going to be coming up in just a few seconds for you guys. I'm nervous about it. I'm nervous about putting up this building. Um, my plan is to get it all laid out um, how it's supposed to be and then just call a couple buddies up to stand each one of those things up and get them uh, ready to go <laughs> okay well we're gonna get right into this now and uh i'm not quite sure how this is gonna go but we're we're gonna find out here's an important tip that i kind of wanted to give everybody when you get your manuals for stuff especially big buildings like this um put them in a in a binder um this one I just went ahead and I and I hole punched the binder and then I grabbed the tools that I'm going to need. So that way you have your tools right with your book when you stop and you get going again. Let's see what we got here. I have already laid out the 801475s. Uh, there is one there and the other one's on the other side. And I'm just going to uh, gonna run over and grab uh, uh, two 801999s. 801999. Here we go. Obviously, I'm not going to do this with you guys. We're going to set you up with a time lapse and here we go. All right, so I've gotten two frames kind of together. And I just want to give you my first impressions because I, I'm not, honest to God, guys, I'm not gonna make you all sit there and watch me put up this whole building in a time-lapse. Not gonna do that, <laughs> don't worry. But let me give you my first impression. So first of all, um, uh, these brackets that hold the posts that go this way, very easy to install on that side. Let me get up to these guys. These guys right here, oh my god, they are the biggest pain in the ass. Let me show you over here. All of that went together very well until we get over here to this guy. And let me tell you something. I don't know what it is that they did, but these holes, you can see there, they just don't line up. And uh, what I'm going to end up having to do is drill out uh, one side of this bracket. Now, I've, I've used two brackets now. Uh, trying to get that to, to seat and no matter how you shake it, it just doesn't line up even if you give it a, a good whack with a hammer it just does not line up and let me tell you it's it's so frustrating because I, on that one little bracket that I just showed you I, I think I've been banging on that for like 10 or 15 minutes now and it only takes me about 15 to put a section together so it's pretty frustrating. I'm not happy with that aspect of this shelter logic building. It's their tolerances are they're not sloppy. Um, they're not too tight. They're just bad. They're just, they're just bad. So strike one for the shelter logic. Anyway, I'm going to keep carrying on here and get this thing put together. And then hopefully uh, somebody will come up and help me stand her up. All righty, everybody, my lords, my ladies. It's Ren Fair season, right? The building is up. It's done. Well, not done. 
put it top. There she be. 36 foot of her. Um, really struggled getting this cover on, and I'm gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Um, and I'll show you what I have left to do. But let's walk around the front so you guys can see what she looks like in the front. There she is. The 10 foot six door opening right here. And if you want to come inside, it's been a little dark, but I've got a light in here. She's up and looks pretty good. Now, it may look good, but I have some serious issues uh, with this building, and we're going to get to those issues now. One of the first issues I have is how they have these ratchet straps coming on the outside of this building. This little flap that's supposed to keep the snow and the whatnot out cannot sit on the ground anymore because it's stuck on this ratchet strap. Massive design flaw there. And this is the same way all the way around. I have a few ideas on how to fix it, but um, this is a really, really, really stupid idea. On the inside with these ratchet straps, these ones right here that hold this front cover, you can see how loose they are. I can't tighten them any more than that because if I tighten these nice and taut, the door zippers don't zip. They're too tight. And the last thing you folks want is a super tight uh, zipper on this because it's going to tear. And once it tears, you're kind of screwed, especially if it's in like, you know, the dead of winter. The other problem I have, and I guess this is my fault because I'm a rational, sane human being. I thought that the back panel would also have a door. There would be a door back here. Um, it does not. <laughs> and, you know, looking it up, yeah, it, it, there's no uh, add-on for a door in the rear. This is asinine to me. It's completely asinine. Um, I have not called the company to see if I should have a rear door or a panel. I, I Again, I don't know. But this kind of fucks me because I don't want to come in from the front of the building. I don't want to walk from my house, which is over here, all the way around, and then I have to unzipper this door in the wintertime. Once that door's shut, I want it to, you know, be shut. So I need to at least call the company and find out what I can do. Can I cut into this to frame in a doorway? I, I honestly don't know, but I'll have some more information for you guys in a later video, because, well, I'm done with this shit. And that brings me to my latest issue. This roller door system. This roller door system is fucking garbage. It is absolutely garbage. And I'm going to show you. All right, so I hopped up on a ladder and I started giving this thing a pull to kind of start and roll it up. And immediately, first pull, you can see that the rope is now just jammed and wedged in that pulley. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a pull and you're gonna see that as I pull this up, because I'm not using my tripod, you get about halfway and look, it just jams itself back up instantly. This is the worst roller door system I have ever seen in my entire life. They shouldn't even sell this. Shelter Logic, folks, if you watch this video, you should immediately remove these off the market and don't sell them. Because just off of this alone, I'm not going to buy another one of these roller door systems ever. But I do appreciate you guys sending it to me for free. Well, I am all done farting around with that thing for today. Like I said, there's a few more things I have to do to finish up the job. But I got to get this video out. And uh, so I'm up here in my office uh, where I'm going to be doing the editing. And I wanted to give you guys the cost breakdown of, of what we've got going on here. Eventually, a dog is going to knock into my tripod. I can guarantee you that. Who's texting me? That's my wife texted me. Anyway, okay. So the building, the entire building with shipping was $8,223.27. Okay. The building alone was $7,114. So the pad, the, you know, the stones and all the boulder work and that stuff was $4,100. Um, and that was worth every penny so far. 
I ordered some vapor barrier. Um, again, I'm going to put all this stuff down in the, in the description of where I got everything, but I ordered some vapor barrier. I think I got it off of Amazon. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, but I do remember that that was, uh, about three or 400 bucks, uh, for the vapor barrier. And I have plenty left over to do other projects around the shop. Now let's talk about time. It took me a full day just to assemble all the frames by myself. I am extremely fortunate that my next door neighbor, Richie, um, who is probably one of the most wonderful human beings on the face of the planet, um, he actually owns a knuckle boom. And he came up with his uh, knuckle boom and helped us put up uh, a few of these sections and then was super, super kind to actually leave his knuckle boom up here for me so that I could use it to put up um, the rest of the pieces myself. While we're talking about this wonderful human being, uh, he actually uh, came up with his uh, tree truck, his bucket truck, and pruned all of the trees around the shelter so that I really don't have to worry about any big branches coming down through the top. All in all, it took me a full eight hour day to assemble the pieces by myself. Then it took about three and a half hours to stand up three sections. And then by myself, I was able to get the rest of the sections up or about 30 hours into this building. To assemble the canopy took my wife and I an entire day to do the end pieces and then bring the cover over the top. Then I spent about another two or three hours uh, farting around with that cover, trying to stretch it, trying to ratchet it down. This is a, it was a lot of work. Hi, Ruby. Um, it was a ton of work. Uh, under no circumstances is this a project that someone could try and tackle without some pretty decent equipment. At minimum, a tractor uh, or a lull, or if you have a good neighbor like my buddy Richie, a knuckle boom. Thank God for the knuckle boom. So in conclusions, would I recommend uh, this building for a boat shed? Yes. Um, just based on cost alone. Um, if I were to build this building uh, stick frame conventional style, um, I would have had to order trusses and I would have needed um, 15 trusses in order to do it. And right now in my area, the trusses are about $750 a piece. And then the, you know, the additional labor cost and, uh, you know, pouring a concrete pad, uh, you know, we're looking at a 60, 60, $70,000 building. And in the town that I live in, um, I wouldn't even be able to do that uh, with a permanent structure um, that close to the road. So that's going to do it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, I got nothing else for you. I'm going to go have a beer and take a nap. We'll see you next time.